time I'll say that this is my favorite prospect. Gabriel is just, like, look at this off-bounce three-pointer. Like, that's just absolutely ridiculous. Well, I was looking at NBA on Fanspo, and I was looking at mock drafts, and I saw this guy among prospects, and I'm just randomly clicking a name, and it's like seeing a present. Just look how he got that steal from playing the passing lane for the dunk. The thing about Procedia, alright, there are two things about him that I really want you to know. First of all, he only played 15 and 18 minutes. This is one of those you won't be in things where a guy is way better, but he doesn't get the time. He has great anticipation. He has great lateral quickness. He plays above the rim. I swear he has an above 40 vertical. And that level of athleticism is just inspirational, especially in transition, where you know we have James Harden, so that's going to immediately translate. Also, he's just an amazing defender and a great rebounder, too. He will occasionally even box out big men. We talk about mental toughness. Poshida, I believe, is the toughest prospect in the draft. I mean, you're 6'7", and you're going against European bigs. Here he misses that step back. That creation is a play that he's going to have to develop the ability to literally develop that ball handling at the next level. But I don't think that's as important, again, on a team of John Bead and James Harden. What is important is these type of plays where if you take a look here, how he's able to handle the pressure and make that pass. He doesn't do that consistently, but he shows enough flashes the way if he can develop that. That'll be the next thing for him. And you see him just high-flying again. Effort is the number one thing that pops off when it comes to Procida. He is an incredibly high-effort high, high effort guy. Like, again, for comparison, I think Matisse Bible barely averaged three rebounds a game. And I think similarly could be said for Danny Green. Procida got the same three rebounds in one fourth of the time. Per 36, Procida would average... Over six rebounds a contest. Now, when it comes to his offensive game, and you see there, just boxing out a big man and grabbing a rebound like that. But when it comes to Procida, what I like is you see him able to pass and relocate. He has a blend. He's a blend of two people. You're going to see Steph Curry level move off of the ball, kind of playmaking from that perspective in terms of you can. Use a drag screen, double screen, and get Pusota open that way. So he had that Steph Curry off-ball movement. But in terms of his actual shooting ability, I would say it's more Clay Thompson with that 6-7 release arc. So imagine having the best of both worlds. Imagine having Clay Thompson's size and athleticism along with Steph Curry moving movement and ability like that. And that, for me, is just a tantalizing prospect. Does have to get a bit bigger, a bit stronger sometimes in some clips that you're going to see later. A little bit of struggle finishing around the rim, although he shot 47 and 52% from the field. But obviously, you can improve on your strength and get better. He's only 19 years old. And see, some might say... Why should the Sixers go in this direction? Well, I'm going to put a contrast to the Sixers' last first-round pick. Remember, I did not like Jaden Springer. The big reason why is that Jaden Springer did not show... Look at this step-out jumper. Did you ever see anything like that from Jaden Springer in his tape, even on his good games out of Tennessee? No. On this channel, we are about prospects with upside. We're not about guys who are never going to make it to the NBA, who have very little potential. Like, I'm sorry. Jaden Springer just never impressed me. But here you see, look at that quick release, straight trigger. One pass, boom. And this is what this channel is all about when it comes to prospects. Again, quick trigger, boom. Bam. And some might say, why do you have to bring one prospect down? I don't want to necessarily bring down the prospect. It's more the fact, again, a quick trigger boom. It's more the fact that what got me so upset was I couldn't envision where you would play Jaden. It was like, where are you going to put this guy? 
He's not a one. He's not a two. In the case of Gabrielle here, he's either two who, if you bulk him up, he can play the three, but he can play both spots. He would get regular season minutes for this team as a 19-year-old freshman for this squad. That, for me, is the difference. It's not, oh, you're young or, you know, some Sixer fans are thinking, and obviously Doc Rivers has given us credible reason to think, well, if you're young, you're just not going to get time. It's about whether or not you have the skill, positional size, that actually, I don't know, play NBA basketball. That's my thing. And Pokita, he has everything. The shooting, the athleticism, the finishing ability, the mental toughness, the physical defense, transition open three-point shooting. Everything that the Sixers could want in the prospect. Look at this relocation. That's what I'm talking about. Bam, that's that Steph Curry thing where you're able to relocate like this. And then, obviously, as he's able to rise and catch, if he gets his ball handling better, can you imagine with that Steph Curry motion? So you're rushing to this 40% three-point shooter who can hit these shots instantly. And again, with that rebounding tenacious and toughness. But if he has a handle, he can attack closeouts, and he can finish. And he's an out of lob threat, which obviously James Harden loves these athletes. And that's another thing about Pukita. That vertical, that leap, that allows them to be a lot fed at this level. Like, that's another thing that would just add so much to the 76ers. We just don't have that athleticism. And then that passing potential I talked about, that if he gets to that level, that's going to be a big swing set for him. And you see him again here in transition. I think he's capable of making basic reads with little Pessa as you see him passing to a stretch big here. And I think that that bodes well for the Sixers in that James Harden and Jerome B will attract so much attention that those simple, easy reads are going to be there at the NBA level even more than it was in FIBA play. So when I look at Posita and his fit here, it is a damn near perfect fit for the Sixers and for Posita. Like, look at that. They're grabbing a rebound over a big and then kicking it out to reset the offense. Like... And then you see here again, getting the rebound, diving on the ball. He, if we had that in game six, we push it to game seven. Just that tenacity and toughness. So you know how we all talked about, we want toughness, we want edge. It doesn't always have to come from some, oh my God, you're 33 years old. I, I'm telling Doc Rivers, fuck that. No, I'm drafting you somebody who I know could play tough if you play them. And Prashida is tough, mentally tough, physically tough. The rebound and finish over bigs, well, not finish consistently, but just to even get the shot up. I just, and then there's the defense, obviously, the shot block right there. I just like this guy so much. I, I like his tenacity. I keep referring back to that. His, look at that. He's literally behind the screen, and then he comes up to block the shot. If it were a son of somebody we know, he's behind the screen to play dead. And here's another rebound, tough in traffic. And then he catches this ball. And see, that, that's the skill set right there. Now, that should have been a foul. The defender literally put his shoulder. That should have been a foul. It would be a foul in the NBA. He would have gone to the line. So that was a great take. Here he catches the open three and splash. Can't leave Bushida open from three. And again, just the physical tenacity and toughness. Some of these rebounds, he has no right to get a six for seven. But that shows you how much heart the Bushida plays. And that hard translation to the United And one reverse layup right here. Little left to right euro step. Like, bam. You can just see the potential in Bushida. And he's able to hit the free throw. His free throw percentage improved 78% this year. Like, that's not super great, but I think it can continually get better. There he draws the foul on the spin move. But see, in the NBA, you want him to be able to finish that and get stronger in two years. But he was able to draw the foul, so no harm. But you would like for him to be able to finish 
that exchange. Here again, you see the defense. This is called a foul. It's bullshit. The defender is not... He could still make a move. Like, he literally is actually using his arm to draw the contact. Play on. Like, I'm surprised for FIBA standards. Like, that, that should have been a play on. And there you see him competing for the ball again. And it was a turnover just because... Like, why would he pass the ball to anybody in the corner area? Dumb play by the big man. And there you see him getting that tap up rebound. Not once, but twice. An elite rebounder. Here's the thing. So, she see an average again. I mentioned this earlier at the top. He averaged three rebounds in just 15 minutes. In this game, he got like six rebounds. I think, I know, just the four. But... The fact that he's this competitive rebounder, this competitive fighter, is why I want to draft him.